One of the things that will make the difference between a future that works for all, a creative, vibrant, inclusive future, and one which is not like that, is the capacity for leaders to create a space for possibilities to come forward. Hi Arun, it is such a joy to have you on Confab, a special initiative started by My Big Brand Story to share unique stories and compelling brand narratives. Thank you very much, Monica, and equally I'm delighted to be here with you uh, on this Big Brand Story Confab and looking forward to an exciting and interesting conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, so Arun, uh, you know, this conversation is something that is very close to my heart because uh, you have been uh, talking about wholesome leadership and yes. at various forums you have discussed about it. Could you just tell something about what is wholesome leadership and how did you arrive at this unique concept? Okay, so let me start the other way around by what was what were some of the things that really were worrying me earlier and that is that you know we found that many organizations were becoming uh, not very health conducive they were not conducive to health they were not conducive to health of the people working in them or to the health of the environment and you know you found a lot of friction a lot of exploitation you found inequity you found degradation of the environment and said uh, the kind of leadership that businesses seem to be following appear to be deficient. It was not taking into account some very, very fundamental things. Like, for example, the well-being of people. Life is not for business. Business is for life. Absolutely. Business has to serve life. So that was one thing we're worried about, concerned about. The other thing is the impact of businesses on the environment. All kinds of negative impacts also happened because of what business was doing. And the third thing is, you know, a loss of meaning for many, many people working in the corporate sector, working in, you know, organizations that were very hierarchical. These things disturbed us a bit. And we were wondering what kind of leadership is really creating such organizations? What kind of leadership is taking our planet down the road of environmental destruction, climate change, uh, burnout, uh, inequity. There's something that needs to be changed in the way we lead. And leadership for me is about creating new futures. It's about writing new stories. So I started asking myself and, you know, we started discussing what is the new kind of story we want to write? And therefore, what is the new kind of leadership we need to create that kind of a story? So three things emerged. One is that we need more connectedness. We need more connection to ourselves. We need more connection with other people and we need more connection with the earth. Absolutely. With all the biosphere. The second thing that emerges is that we need to zoom in to the deepest core of consciousness and the deepest core of meaning and purpose in our life, and then also zoom out as leaders to think of the planet as a whole. And the third thing that came out in our thinking was that it's not enough to talk about a profit, profit, profit. You have to talk about profit, people, purpose, and the planet, all the four Ps. So out of these ideas came the concept of wholesome leadership which is leading from the heart for a better earth, for thriving, successful and flourishing business that helps people to thrive, helps the planet to thrive and also helps your profits to thrive. So wholesome leadership is leading for abundance and joy and effectiveness and success, but success defined in a more holistic way in a more complete way. So in, in a nutshell, that's that's how it is. And it was born 
out of the sheer pain to see so much suffering in the corporate sector incredible i think uh, you know the way you narrated the four p's it's it's phenomenal you know i think uh, leaders today uh, are um, you know the after covid especially after covid the scenario has changed i'm i'm seeing like like I, i'm active on linkedin and i, I see uh the way uh, pre covid and post covid the entire conversation on linkedin also has changed on Absolutely. various yeah so it's incredible i think uh, you know do you think our leaders are ready to embrace this style of leadership now i think you 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 took the words out of my mouth i think thanks to covid and in many of our webinars we call it master covid because <laughs> it taught us so many things <laughs> after covid suddenly people are asking questions that they never spoke of before covid mm -hmm. people started dying like just like that and then people started asking i mean why am i here on planet earth absolutely what is my life about is it just to go to the office and come back and go and come back and pay insurance and then die one day is that what it is uh, or does that is there a deeper purpose Mm -hmm. are we meant to work for something more than just making money making money making money i mean the metaphor i love to use is oxygen is super important for our health for our wow. not only health for our aliveness we Absolutely. can't live without oxygen for more than 3 minutes mm -hmm. but what kind of life would it be where a person is just collecting oxygen cylinders collecting and accumulate <laughs> oxygen <laughs> cylinders that would be a silly life but that's absolutely money mm. it's not accumulating money as if I, you know if i if i if my money becomes 10x from what i'm earning today i'm not going to eat 10 chapatis i'll still have one chapati i'll still wear one shirt so i think uh, people have now begun to understand the importance of asking wider and deeper questions hmm. so covid was one thing the, the sheer anxiety and crisis that covid caused young people gen z today is asking very very different questions they are not going to go by what you or i or parents uh, talked about they are asking about meaning they are talking about values they are talking about purpose right so i think people and and of course the climate change the entire crisis of of the climate of of species dying of of many many uh, calamities hitting like hurricanes and fires and of course the very fact that the equity of wealth is absolutely totally off beam it's skewed i mean just 2% of 5% of the world's population owns more than 90 Five percent of the remaining, the lowest part, you know. So it's mm. people have started asking questions, and therefore suddenly our work has become very relevant. Absolutely. And people are saying, "Yes, we we understand what you guys are doing, and yes, we see now why you are talking about wholesome leadership." Amazing, you know, when you said this, uh, that Gen Zs and millennials are. Uh, talking more sense yesterday in fact yesterday uh, i had a conversation with one of my uh, young cousins and he said you know i left my organization i said oh, you are just like 6 7 months old in that organization why did you leave he said uh, i found that organization very toxic i said uh, uh, you know uh, do you know this word toxic because when <laughs> i was at your age i didn't understand i was told this is how organizations have to be this is what yeah, i understood yeah, yeah. so you know this the way you kind of are explaining this entire thing that the uh -huh. way, uh, gen z's and millennials are become becoming more purpose driven passion driven and they want absolute, uh, absolute balance in their life work life balance very true very true so i i think uh, this is incredible you know how you are kind of um, discussing about wholesome leadership so i'm sure there would be some a success story of this use case sure sure yeah. sure sure like yes 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 something it will be great to hear this yeah thing. yeah well there are many actually i mean like for example uh, one of the things we do in our programs 
with leaders, with senior leaders, uh, is that we uh, have a lot of focus on fitness, on exercise. Okay. We climb a mountain or we do yoga or we meditate or we laugh or do some things like that. Uh, because we believe that unless you take care of your body and your mind, you can't be a good leader. Absolutely. So that is one thing we routinely do. Also, we have in many of our programs, residential especially, we have a thing called Talent Night. And suddenly out of the woodworks, people are suddenly singing and dancing and writing poetry and music. And, and they're wondering, well, why did you not show us this all these years? <laughs> So I think to see how very, very siloed, uh, very blinkered leaders suddenly start opening their hearts, suddenly start connecting, communicating. We have, have many, many, many such success stories. But one thing comes to my mind, uh, Monica, which I want to share with you. There was this organization with very, very hard-nosed left hemisphere analytical, okay. logical, structured, Excel spreadsheet equals success kind of thinking. Right. And this program we were doing was on emotional intelligence and empathy. Okay. And we were talking about, you know, the feelings and, you know, why feelings are important and how feelings, uh, you know, impact the business. Because if my heart is not in the business, if I don't bring that passion and energy into the business, we're not going to make much money. I agree. So at the end of the program, and this was such a beautiful thing for me, I said, okay, you've gone through these two days now. Can you make a diagram that maps from things like love and joy and peace and trust and all these so-called softer things, can you map it to the p and and the balance sheet and to success? And they did such a great job. They did such a great job. And the leader of the organization, he apologized to everyone. He said, yeah. I'm very sorry, folks. That <laughs> all these years, all I could look at was just the numbers, numbers, numbers. Mm -hmm. and I never empathized. I never listened. I never understood your feelings. I'm sorry. That was a, for me a big aha moment. It was a real a turning point that hard nose, left hemisphere, technocrat, engineers over two days, the hearts can melt and they understand not only the power of emotional intelligence and empathy, but also see the linkages of mm. that to profits, of that to sustained growth, of that to innovation, Monica. Oh, and innovation, that's interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. an incredible value generator. Mm -hmm. And I can't be innovative unless I'm happy and joyous and mm -hmm. trusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Interesting. So, uh, so Arun, when you you discussed about uh, this incredible, uh, you know, aha moment that you had, so could you just uh, tell something about your journey also, Pragati Leadership's journey also? Because yeah. I I have been very closely associated with yes. Pragati Leadership. Yes. I yes. would like to you know kind of tell you uh, when um, I got to know about or I got to work with Pra Pragati Leadership yeah. Yeah. on various projects. Before that, for me, you know, I always thought that I am like this. Do I think different? Am I uh, not thinking correctly? Because I was told corporates, you have to be, you know, very, very uh, diplomatic or you cannot speak your mind. You don't have to be transparent or you have to uh, not have a team spirit in your uh, you know, team. Uh, you have to treat your subordinates as subordinates. They can't be your friends or, or equal yeah. peers. So I think when I got exposed to Pragati leadership, it was like a dream organization. Oh, something like this exists and some someone is talking about this. This is incredible. And how are they relating, uh, you know, numbers to, uh, you know, performance and then their, uh, and that performance is driven by uh, positive in energy, pro positive thinking process, emo uh, you know, high empathy, purpose, passion. I, I, I was actually, uh, you know, it was like a dream. So could you just tell something about your uh, journey and how? Sure, you sure, 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 sure. Yeah, well, actually, uh, my partner Anu and I about 35, 40 years back, 
had this dream of creating an organization where people were at the center of it. It was not that people were for business or something. No, I mean, people, people's well-being, people's joy, people's health, right. people's uh, evolution was at the heart of the business. And we tried to look around for such businesses, but we didn't find any. We said, okay, well, let's create one. <laughs> and we, I, I went nuts looking for a Hindi word for evolution, which is what was in my heart. And in fact, okay. that's what our logo also, you know, spiraling mm. outwards mm -hmm. and expanding. Right. But I couldn't find a word for evolution. So we settled for Pragati. Okay. which is progress. Right, right. But actually, progress isn't evolution. So I really still don't know the Hindi word for <laughs> evolution. So we started off in a tiny little room with a baby Hermes typewriter. And then, you know, uh, our daughters were very small and slowly kept on moving. When we started telling people that our values are things like love and care and trust, and we're going to do business, they said, you're trying to make snowballs in hell. <laughs> you're opening a snowball factory in hell because business Imagine. is hell. Mm. How can you do this? I mean, this is not business, love and care mm. and empathy mm. and compassion. This is not business. But we knew that something in our heart told us, no, this is the way, this is the way. And I think steadily plodding on with with deep gratitude to our customers who had faith in us, deep gratitude to our team members, people such as yourself and so many of our facilitators who are all resonating to the same heartbeat. Right, right, they, right. They can feel that heartbeat and not because Anu and I did something great. No, I don't say that. I'm saying that we simply followed the heartbeat of life. Hmm. Today also, if right. you ask me, Arun, what's your inspiration? I'm saying life is my inspiration. My God. Incredible. It's wondrous. And for me, Monica, life is love in full expression. Wow. I mean, this honestly, you, yeah, but you look at a baby, yeah? you look at a small baby hmm. and your heart weeps with joy. The wonder of the baby, you see birds, you see thousands of fractals like what you're seeing behind me. You go into the sea, deep mm. into the oceans and you see lovely colors, you see fish and you're in awe, absolute awe. My God, mm. this is life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why should our business and our work and our service not be aligned with life? Absolutely. Who are we? We're not any special somebody, which is a big mistake we made for so many mm. years. We have to be humble. We have to surrender to life as our ancestors would do. Absolutely. Ancestors did that. Everyone did that. So all this kept on and kept on. And then comes Master COVID and suddenly we are in real business. <laughs> and people say, oh, my God, this is what they've been saying for 35 years. This Imagine. Is yes, yes, yes. So suddenly from all over, we are, you know, getting, oh, please help. Please do this. Please do that. I mean, we are stressed. We are Gen Z's uh, mass resignation and please do something and our, our leaders are, are stressed. Can you care for them? Can you mm. teach them to be more centered, more authentic, more resilient, more empathetic? And that's what we're doing. And today I'd like to share with you that we believe that India has a deep core of wholeness at its heart. And even deeper, if you go into India, I would say Kashmir, uh, from where we both come. I mean, right. has the, the fountainhead, the source of the knowledge of wholeness. It Absolutely. was called Kashmir Shaivism, but yes. think of it in terms of wholeness, that life itself is the guru. Everything is sacred. Every person is sacred. Every cell is sacred. So our dream, Monica, today is to become a multinational and take our work to every part of the globe in the form of fractals. So behind me, you're seeing fractals. A fractal is like if you see a gobi. Yes. A gobi, a, yes. A right. Then you 
take a bit of the cauliflower away and that's mini cauliflower yeah and you take yeah. a tiny bit of that cauliflower and it's a micro cauliflower absolutely that's it's called a fractal right right so right. we would like fractals of pragati leadership of coach mantra driven by deep love and deep oneness and wholeness by enlightened professionals to take this work all over the world and it's not anything i have invented it is life yes absolutely what is, i mean you just got to follow life life is caring life is loving life is creative life is collaborative well, mimic life please and and you know something if you just sit silently your heart will know what to do i agree I'm not right. saying don't use books, don't use knowledge. Use it, but always in subservience to the guidance of your heart, to the guidance of the deepest wisdom that resides in your heart. Absolutely. So that's been the journey. So I'm very upbeat about the future. I'm very upbeat about what will happen now. Not because I'm doing it; the whole universe is conspiring, conspiring. to make it happen. So we are on a kind of a tidal wave that is going to take it all over the world, literally like this diagram behind me. Yes. Starting from a tiny seed, it will spiral outwards in hundreds of fractals. So, in a sense, this image is a metaphor for what will happen now. Absolutely. And mind you, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's something uh, you know you are being so humble and you're see- being so modest but i think uh, i i have seen you uh, you know talking about um, whole wholesome leadership talking about uh, bringing in revolution in our organizations so you know you you just being modest but i i know you are at the center of this entire creation and you're trying well, to <laughs> let me let me just uh, correct you there uh, the divine sacred source is at the center of all that is happening i don't take any i don't take any credit for whatever is happening because firstly if my parents were not there i wouldn't be there absolutely i agree if their gra- if my grandparents weren't who they were then my parents wouldn't be who they are and I won't be who I am, and the same for Anu's parents and the parents of all the wonderful people right. who work as part of the Pragati community. There is one self. There is only one self, one divine source, and to yes. that source, I surrender and I say thank you, thank you, thank you from my heart to that one source, that one heart, because that is the real. the real doer of the magic that is pragati and the more we open our hearts to that guidance the more we open our hearts to that silence to the peace and the wisdom of our heart the more the work of source will be done absolutely this is not my work or anu's work or uh, it's it's the work of life absolutely we're just dancing with life and having fun and and getting a lot done i know i know i know <laughs> it, it, isn't it amazing to you know just uh, look at this 35 years ago uh, you know you uh, you conceived something and then it's 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 manifested and it has manifested beautifully and at the scale at which it is manifesting it's incredible and i think Yeah. Um, you know if i also kind of uh, look back now say in 2007 i did my first meditation course yes, and that yes. time that thing it was like oh what is this what are you doing are you crazy you are you are supposed to uh, just be doing your corporate stuff now everyone like all my friends who i used to discuss and talk about uh, you know being more uh, mindful they, they're coming back to me and talking about uh the same things and they think we want to do it because we realize our work and life needs to be more organized it needs Absolutely. to be more uh, driven Very by positive spirit we need to be Absolutely. energized at the Absolutely. end of the day i think Absolutely. i think it's incredible you know thank you thank you man and, and praise to the universe praise to our gurus praise to all our gurus Right. Uh, and their gurus who have blessed us through the whole yes yes there's a whole tradition of old tradition yeah yeah yes, great yes. great 
so uh, so you know we discussed so much uh, what do you think has been one incredible thing uh, about your journey one uh, you know not one they they i'm sure there are many so so anything that you would like to highlight uh, so that could be an inspiration for all of us yeah and sure. that could be inspiration for the budding entrepreneurs and business leaders because uh, your uh, you know challenges that you would have faced would have sure, sure. kind of inspired sure. you to you know take this up in a different form yeah so a uh, beautiful question and i think the one of the key highlights of my journey has been a uh, crystal clear understanding slowly unfolding of one clear understanding that the outer is nothing but a reflection of the inner okay interesting so earlier it was just the concept in the mind you know the outer is just a reflection of the inner but slowly experientially i began to see that when i started making shifts in my thinking mm -hmm. suddenly i found things started changing outside mm -hmm. and i started understanding to give you an example that giving is equal to receiving and that's Absolutely. what i read hmm. i said but hello what is this i mean you mean if i want more money i have to give more money yeah if you want more money you have to give more money so i said okay let me donate so i gingerly started donating a little bit and suddenly i found that more orders are coming in so i started writing bigger and bigger checks hmm. bigger and bigger orders started coming in so uh i think recognizing that inner shifts in me lead to outer shifts and that the real work is not outside mm -hmm. the real work is on me inside Absolutely. it's not about pragati it's not about my consultants no it's about you make your change happen inside you change Absolutely. your consciousness raise your consciousness and suddenly pragati will shift so mm -hmm. i think that has been a great journey a great learning for me that the outer is reflecting the inner and if mm -hmm. i expand the inner if i deepen my awareness if i expand my awareness suddenly outer begins to expand now the more we started thinking beyond india we started thinking of uh, let's say belgium or australia or singapore or dubai or africa and that's a very big piece in my mind right now is africa i i really weep for how much exploitation has happened in africa absolutely mm -hmm. just to give you an example 60% of the unused arable land agricultural land right, where right, you right. can grow hmm. is in africa 60% of the unused yes. arable land on the planet is in africa imagine and yet food crisis in somalia food crisis in senegal the right. entire sahel belt is in food crisis the horn of africa is in is in a crisis why why so reason i'm saying this is because my heart really really reaches out it, it cries for africa and i yearn to do something for mother africa so this is a thought right now but it is such a strong thought that by the grace of existence i know that we will be going to africa we will set up little fractals in nairobi in uh, you know other parts of of africa where spirited professionals wholesome mm -hmm. leaders and catalysts will start doing the work because we have a beautiful knowledge base we have wonderful people wonderful facilitators so they will start doing the work and it will happen so i think recognizing that creation happens inside first Right. and then it sort of spirals outwards has been a very very important part of the journey second important part of the journey has been antarmukhi sada sukhi don't bother about what's <laughs> happening in the world yes Forget, I, i you know what monica i haven't seen the tv for two years no three years now covid plus one three years i haven't watched tv i don't know what's happening yeah if there's something happening i'll see if i need to see but keeping your mind pure Absolutely. keeping your mind focused on the infinite source the vai guru the uh, the heart of divine self call it allah or shiva or holy spirit doesn't matter is the same thing 
that is the greatest blessing i have in my life and and for me that is the only thing that matters get that piece right and everything will be right and you can do anything in the world and you don't focus on your connection with the source mm-hmm. it's not going to work mm-hmm. yeah and out of that i have a few things which if a young entrepreneur came to me i could share but may i share some of those yeah things? absolutely we would love to our viewers would love to you know get inspired sure so i think five things i would like to share for young entrepreneurs or budding leaders number 1 business is in service of life not life for business it's not that you have to sacrifice your health sacrifice your family sacrifice your children and your wife and your relationships and your neighbors and your parents why because i have to do business hello for what Absolutely. business is subservient to life keep mm. that always in mind a no. corollary to that is point number 2 take care of your health take care mm. of what you're eating make sure you meditate make sure you 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 nourishing your body properly you're sleeping well Mm. because if you have health you have everything else That's can true. come you can have anything in the world you don't have health what's the point what's the point mm. that is point number 2 point number 3 is joy is the hallmark of excellence in every field mm-hmm. add value joyfully be joyful be happy and out of that joy will come excellent value delivery to your customers excellent innovations excellent uh, value delivery for yourself for your people mm. that is the third thing the fourth thing is learning 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 every moment make it a teaching moment every moment make it a kata moment where you're coaching your people every moment learn learn right, right. and right. the last thing i would say is never ever lose sight of the impermanence of things mm-hmm. never forget wow. that one day you're going to leave the body and your organization and your stocks and your shares and everything you're going to leave it behind right yeah so yeah. while you have it use it with love use it with compassion for your welfare for the welfare of other people for the welfare of society for the welfare of nature and don't make the mistake of thinking you're going to carry your car and your stocks and your shares and your collections your fantastic collections with you you're not going to take anything with you absolutely all those carpets and pens and wines will remain here nothing will go with you mm-hmm. so use this time to be happy to be healthy to be compassionate and as dalai lama says the holiness dalai lama says if you want to be happy be compassionate and if you mm-hmm. want to make others happy be compassionate and be compassionate to yourself to people and to the environment and to animals also don't eat animals they don't meant to be eaten please go <laughs> vegan <laughs> or vegetarian i know many people would like me for this but i'm speaking on behalf of those poor innocent chickens and lambs and cows and pigs who are slaughtered massacred by us humans so please don't do that last thing last thing that's the sixth point is don't take yourself so seriously rule rule number 6 don't take <laughs> i so- i think this is this is the most important and crucial <laughs> all of us take ourselves so seriously that yeah you know we get into that victim consciousness mere sath ho raha hai main hi hu mere maine aise nahi kiya hai so i think uh, yeah this is such a powerful thought Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. moment we realize it i think a lot of things are sorted absolutely and you know if you ever feel that uh, you know you take yourself too seriously just watch on youtube carl sagan's the pale blue dot okay just okay. watch that watch that video and he kind of starts with earth and this is our home and then he keeps zooming out zooming out until the earth becomes a tiny tiny we built <laughs> and then he said my god i'm i'm a, 
pixel on this pixel <laughs> and how seriously we take ourselves mm. and if we remember that 99.999% of an atom is empty space i agree all this is empty space relax a little bit relax mm. and don't don't take yourself too seriously do your best give your life the best you have be creative be loving and remember be one with life and that monica is also leadership being Amazing. one with love in full expression and yeah, not not being a tiny little ego working for some tiny little thing no hey i am be magnificent be lovely and be one with life dance with life with full joy energy enthusiasm and abundance that's what i wish for all your viewers that's what i wish for my team for my customers for you for everyone on the planet i wish joy energy enthusiasm and peace thank you so and much abundance abundance i think uh, such <laughs> powerful words you are sharing thank i you. think uh, you know uh, arun uh, i got to uh, you know learn or uh, that you have become a trustee of one of the you know very leading organizations charter yes. for passion charter so, for compassion charter for compassion so could you just you know quickly cover uh, some yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting points around yeah. this organization and right. what is your role what are you going yeah, to yeah. do sure sure so i i was recently on the 12th of jan uh, december unanimously elected onto the board of trustees so greatly very grateful for that uh, honor and of course i've been serving for some years now but in a nutshell what the charter for compassion is saying treat others the way you would like to be treated mm-hmm. very yes. simple right no? it's called yeah, the golden very rule. powerful very simple if, yet if powerful if you want to be uh, treated courteously you be courteous mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. you want to be treated kindly and you go to a home and say i need some water well you want them to give you water if someone comes to your home you give them water absolutely if you want to be treated fairly you treat others fairly that is one important theme the second thing is that uh, in the chart of a compassion we have uh, about 4000 schools all over the world who have signed up as compassionate schools we also have 400 compassionate cities wow. who have signed up as compassionate cities Mm-hmm. and monica one thing uh, i'm going to be working on is youth collaborating for compassion wow. how can young people from india uh, talk to young people from pakistan how can mm-hmm. the people from palestine talk to the people of israel how can mm-hmm. a rural school in maharashtra talk to a rural school in burundi mm-hmm. or in uh, in uh, zimbabwe and tell them about moringa tell them about yes. hey, what are we doing here Right. Uh, I remember a school in Hosur uh, in South India was talking to a school in East Java and the Javanese children were so excited to show them the Shiva temples that we have. Right, right. But you are a Muslim country. You are a Muslim country. Indonesia is the second largest. He said no, but we are so proud of our heritage. Heritage. So, you know the the biases the the the, the kind of Frag- fragmentation that has happened because of politics mm. will be overcome when young people start collaborating for compassion when they start talking to each other when schools talk to each other and i would be uh, facilitating this movement globally and uh, as part of the charter for compassion wow that's phenomenal and uh, congratulations for this thank you so much thank you so much thanks thanks arun it has been such a incredible enlightening uh, and you know enlightening session for myself and i'm sure it's for everybody who's hearing this conversation watching this conversation uh thank you so much arun for giving time to us and uh talking so much about wholesome leadership and um you know the way leaders need to kind of take their organizations to a different trajectory I think it's incredible. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you Monica for drawing me out and a very hearty namaste to all your viewers and wish you joy and abundance and enthusiasm. Let's be one, let's work together for a better earth, a more heartful, more joyous earth. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Bye. Thank Bye you. Monica. Bye.